Shalom, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast tonight. We have with us Brother Kellen on screen here beside me. He's in front of me as well, but for you guys, he's here beside me here tonight. And we're going to be talking to you guys uh, about the events that are going on around the world, uh, especially in light of Israel, them trying to internationalize the city there. Uh, the Pope of Rome, his play in all of this, the New World Order, uh, so many different things we're going to speak about the, uh, this evening, and how that the world events, the news that is shaping up, how that's actually playing into biblical prophecy. Uh, Brother Kellen, he was the one that actually hosted the event, Reconciliation with Israel, with a wonderful host of speakers. It was a very blessing uh, what he did there as well as a blessing for the people, both Jews and Gentiles alike, that were, that were part of that, or the Christian community, I should say, not so much Gentiles, but the Christian community. And, uh, and I know, Brother Kellen, if you can tell the people a little bit about this, because uh, you're also going a step further in preparing uh, the video footage that we took at the meeting there for the people. Yeah, thank you, Brother Stephen, for having me on again. Uh, and thank you to yourself and the other nine speakers that spoke last month uh, in Jerusalem. It was quite an event, and um, we are going to be taking the footage, thanks to you uh, videotaping it, uh, and getting it out on YouTube. We're going to have a Reconciliation with Israel channel. Uh, you're welcome, as, as you have been posting videos on your channel as well, to get out to your audience. But then beyond that, uh, we're going to be sending out free DVDs for anyone that wants to have the entire conference on a DVD. Just contact us on the website. Uh, you know, I, I stand by the verse uh, that Jesus said, freely you've received, freely give. And, um, you know, this is information that needs to get out there. You know, I, I recall a lot of people were surprised at a lot of the things that were covered, especially when you went through the uh, timeline of the uh, anti-Semitic things that have happened uh, since, you know, two or three hundred A.D. And, um you know, I think it's just going to be a good educational material for uh, Christians and then also just for Jewish people to understand where we, we are coming from and not from a lot of the things that have been done and currently being done today uh, in the name of Christianity. Amen, amen. Brother Kellen, can you just quickly name the, the nine speakers that you actually had there? I think it'd be interesting for the people, uh, especially those that, that, that wouldn't really know um, as far as wanting to have a copy of this. It may encourage them that much more to want to get a copy of the entire CD. Sure. So we had um, opening the day up uh, of the uh, 16th was Victor Slatter with South Pacific Island Ministries. He um, opened our event and, and really shared some interesting things from perspective translating the Bible over 50 years ago. Uh, obviously, we had yourself. Uh, we had David Zeit, a uh, Jewish um, gentleman that's the executive director of the United with Israel, a uh, pretty large organization there in, in uh, Judea. Uh, we had uh, Todd Horton, uh, who lives in the land for the past 10 years. Um, he uh, shared some perspective of coming out of the, uh, the uh, traditional Catholic uh, uh, Protestant model that uh, most people have inherited today. We had Lonnie Lane, another uh, a Jewish believer in Yeshua. Um, who spoke about uh, just restoring ancient paths and the importance of staying with the Father in Israel. We had Avi Lipkin, as you've had on your program as well, uh, who talked about the Bible block party and uh, Jewish-Christian relations. Yair Davidi, uh, Orthodox Jewish gentleman, who spoke about two things which I, I thought were pretty interesting. Uh, the first one being why, uh, from a Jewish perspective, Orthodox Jewish perspective, why, why they don't want Christians to missionize to them. Uh, based on how we present Jesus to them uh, in conflict with Deuteronomy 13 about the guy that comes and tells them not to follow what the Father told them and can do miracles. Yeah. Maybe that's talking about maybe the person in Revelation 13 too. Um, but uh, <laughs> yes. we had uh, uh, Professor uh, David Friedman, uh, another Jewish believer in Yeshua, who, who spoke about his PhD thesis that he did uh, some decades ago about who were the first century believers in Yeshua and how did they live. And then we had uh, Ayala Baum, uh, who, a new believer in Yeshua, who talked about just her perspective being a new believer in the past couple of years, and what that's like as an Israeli who traces her lineage back in Jerusalem over 600 years. Uh, so very yeah. unique perspectives, and it was interesting to just see how everything flowed together. Even though people didn't know what they were speaking about, you could see that the Father had his hand in the event, and it really touched the people. We actually had uh, people from, I believe, every continent uh, present at the event just wow. about 
You know something, this just comes to my mind, Brother Kellen, I want to share with you as well. I haven't even told you about this as well as those that are listening here. You know, many times I hammer hard the issue that's going on in Israel with the Palestinian people, but I've always tried to, to throw in there, you have to remember not all Palestinian people are, are bad people. And in, in that saying, I got an email the other day from a brother. He's actually in Sweden right now. He was thrown out of the country of Israel. Uh, but he has become a believer in Yeshua as his Messiah, and he's a Palestinian young man. And he has written me some really heart-moving letters. Um, and, and so when I think about the conference that you've done there, uh, it would even be nice to see, uh, next time you do this, maybe we can actually get a Palestinian involved as well that recognizes and respects the right uh, that God gave Israel the land there, and they're willing to be a part of that and be a part in the land with Israel. That would be nice to find that type of happy, happy one, medium. I do know one that we that, that I, I need to I need to talk with her to see if she'd be willing to be public. We we talked about her once before, but um, she would be a powerful guest. Um, so, but, but, yeah, we should look at that next time. I know that uh, Lonnie herself, uh, one of our speakers, is already organizing two events now on Jacksonville, Florida, uh, to, to take the same model that we did in Jerusalem to carry it forward. So Amen. this is good. Um, and, and this is hopefully the seed that's planted for people to really educate themselves and, and seek, just like you're always telling people to seek and read the scriptures and, and, and know, know what we believe and why. Amen. 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 Let's move on then, Brother Kellen. Uh, I know you've been doing a, a lot. You do a lot of research, period, all the time. You're like my wife, constantly researching, and you've really found, you've uncovered some very interesting uh, biblical um, things that tie in to, to the New World Order, the things that are going on with the Pope of Rome, and, and, and just a whole pers a perspective of uh, prophetic events that are, that are taking place uh, just like what we're seeing in Israel right now. We are seeing Psalm 83 totally has been being fulfilled over the last year, and, and we're constantly finding scriptures that are being fulfilled right under our nose, and the people seem to overlook it. And can you share some of that with us as well? Sure. So, you know, I wanted to go back to September kind of to start off, and, and right after we did our event, um, you know, the U.S. welcomed uh, you know, Francis there and did their, their big worship fest for him. But in the midst of that, and since then, there's been a, a significant uptick in articles uh, crediting healings and miracles uh, to Francis. And, and I have a list of eight uh, over the past year, and, and said, uh, most of them have happened recently. But they're going back, and they're, and they're now calling uh, Francis the healing pope. And so the first one, there in these major articles, and I'm talking about AOL, major mainstream publications, uh, the first one they credit was actually happened after Tony Palmer's death and his funeral, uh, where he went to one of these ecumenical, me ecumenical meetings with one of the Christian churches in, in Europe, and the li dry blood turned to liquid. So that was the first instance where I noticed, oh, that's weird. And that was on NBC.com, CNN, and all these major publications covering that he turned his blood from liquid, from, from dry to liquid blood. And I was like, that's really strange. And then uh, now, fast forward in September, and all these reports have come out. And the first one is that uh, they're claiming that the Pope healed um, a hole in the heart of a uh, three-month-old baby. I'll, I'll briefly read through some of these articles, and I'll send you amen, the links amen. again so you can post them for anyone who wants to see them. Sorry, my computer's acting a little slow. I, I may uh, be able to pull them up at the same time while you're bringing them up, Brother Kellen, so that people can actually see it as well. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, you, go ahead. Uh, you go which one? I'll, um, I'll hit them to you in a message here. Okay. Sorry. Uh, here we go. I don't know why it's not doing it here. Let me just refresh it. There we go. All right. Here's the first one coming. Okay. So the first one, the headline, I won't read the whole article. It says, Divine Intervention. Pope for we, we got it. It's up on the Francis screen. Go ahead. baby with holes in her heart, parents say. Amen. Now, now you know, the, the thing that, you'll see, that, that everyone will see in these articles, I'm not going to read the whole thing, is that nowhere in these articles do they claim that God or, or Yeshua 
did the healings. They said Pope Francis healed the people. Amen. Wow. And and, and this is this is um this is the first one. This they said that these people went to the Vatican and the Pope blessed the, the baby in April of twenty fourteen, which is um, a couple months before, you know, Tony Palmer died. And so now they're just coming out with this now at the end of September, right after he leaves the US. So they've been holding this information back. The next one uh, is, is related to a, a, a baby with a, a brain tumor. Yes. And so here's the next link here. I'll, I'll pop, pop open and I'll send to you. Amen. You know, and, and the thing is, guys, when you guys are looking at this, keep in mind, we have several scriptures that actually speak about uh, the beast and the Antichrist and all these guys, they come with miracles. Uh, go ahead, Brother Kellen. We got that. We got the next this one up one right says, now. Pope Francis' blessing a baby with rare condition gives parents hope. Uh, you know, let me just scroll down here real quick. Um, It says, as the Pope wrote by, and this is what happened recently in, in Philadelphia, uh, Asper brought Gianna, their daughter, to Pope Francis, and he blessed her. They said, the kiss was amazing, but when you turn around and see these guys, who are the toughest guys in the world, and every one of them is on their knees crying, the scene in general was divine. You know, they're attributing divinity now to Francis in the second article. And um, <clears throat> here's the next one, which they've covered quite a bit. Okay. In the mainstream, even if Fox News reported this next one, brother, like Fox News, which, you know, a lot of people say that's the, uh, you know, Christian or more Christian oriented uh, news organization. Um, yes. This article, again, mentions uh, them as one of the major publications that broke this. And this one is Pope Francis, Miracle Healing Has Begun, Believes New York Girl in Wheelchair. Uh, just a second here. There's a there's a video in that one that pops up, uh, but you can uh, put that on mute and people can read that. But I pulled out a quote from it really quickly, and I'm just going to close it down so you don't hear the video. It, it, in this article about the 12 year old, um, it, it says that uh, now that the Pope is going to be called the Healing Pope. So this is the first article they hit on this because the Pope went and, and supposedly uh, blessed this girl. And now they could, they could find the disease that she had Lyme disease. And the doctors before this couldn't figure it out. Well, but once Pope Francis laid his hands on the girl, now they're saying Pope Francis is responsible for finding this disease. And then now the next article is that they claim that the girl is going to be able to walk. And now they're attributing the fact that Pope Francis uncovered this disease with his blessing and his miracle that, that, that now this girl is going to be able to walk again. My gosh. And so well, then you've got, um, I, know, I, just, I just sent over the, the follow-up one, I believe, on that one here. Okay. Yes, this one here is the one where Brother Kellen's talking about it. Another Pope Francis miracle, paralyzed girl set to junk wheelchair and walk again. And you yep. can see the, so, the, the photo right there. I mean, they're trying to attribute him to be, to be like Yeshua, right? Exactly. That's why we say they're, they're, they're trying to fake a millennial reign to begin with. They're, they're trying, you know, this is, they're trying to present Pope Francis as the Messiah to the Jewish people. So which Messianic prophet uh, is he going to have? Matter. Well, yeah, we talked, maybe with somebody <laughs> that's selling a book when, when the end of the world is coming, the economy's crashing, so I'll sell you a kit to, to figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the next one, uh, in the Boston Herald that I just sent you, which, which says that uh, this mom says that uh, the Pope can heal my kid. And so this is, this is again, at the end of September. People are, uh, you know, it doesn't say Jesus can heal my kid. You, you can see the picture right. I just sent That's you right. to Boston Herald. We got it up. The Pope can heal my kid. And so here you have this woman. And, and the thing is, is I, you know, I feel for these children and, and these people yes. that need, to need healing. This is a cancer patient, 11-year-old 11 11 -year daughters. And the mother says, yes, I am very, very Catholic. And I believe that this Pope, pope can touch Maya. He'll heal her. Didn't say that that uh, that Jesus would heal her. Said that the Pope would heal her. Wow. Now. And she uh, had. You say she has cancer, let brother me Kellen. Find this one here. Is yeah, she... it says that this is, she's um, she's grapp she's grappling with all kinds of chemotherapy for the past five years. It's an eleven-year-old. Wow. 
And, you know, to give, give so people got... a little idea on that right there, you know, it's interesting to see what God can do. God can heal anything. And even like recently, we had uh, a friend of ours here at the house, uh, for, stage four cancer, and man was given up by the doctor. He said that he only had, I think, three months left to live. And we've been through this once before, but because God has put so many, even, I mean, we believe in divine healing. We believe in supernatural healing that, that, that Jesus can heal in any of these uh, ways uh, completely. But God also blesses some people to have that gift of understanding of the different herbs and natural remedies. And my wife, all she did was counsel with him and tell him, and she found the clinic for him in Austria. And she said, you have a very treatable disease. It's just medical science wants to chemotherapy you, kill all of your good blood cells until you're dead. He went over there. This man had cancer of the stomach, cancer of the liver. He had cancer so bad, Brother Kellen, he had not eaten since the month of April other than only liquid. He could only take a little liquid and only like maybe not even one quarter of a cup at a time. And he was a very heavy man. He'd come down to almost skin and bones. Uh, he's been in treatment now for two weeks, eating complete full meals now, and is making a full recovery. And the doctors redid the testing on him and said all the cancer is leaving his body. So, but there again, that's the things that Jesus Christ put on the earth. When God created this heaven and earth, he put things here also that would help us, you know, if we'll only believe it and seek, seek him for it. But all glory goes to Jesus Christ regardless. If it's supernatural healing, if, if it's whichever way God chooses to heal, he is the one that is to be glorified and magnified. Amen. They should have learned from where Moses made that mistake. And all Moses did was get angry because of the people. It wasn't even Moses' fault. It was their fault. But God put the blame on Moses or he let him carry the blame because he got angry at the people and he smote the rock when he wasn't supposed to smite it the second time. I just have a couple more of these healing links to hit, hit really quickly. Now, uh, so we, we just going through the list, just so you hear, you have it. You've got, we start out with turning liquid blood, to, dry blood to liquid blood. We've got a hole in the heart, brain tumor, 12 year old girl in the wheelchair. We have the cancer uh, patient with the mother. Now um, I sent you this one about uh, this couple is claiming that now that they had, uh, I believe it's triplets, uh, after they went to the Vatican and got the blessing of the Pope. The cup, it says Rhode Island couple beats medical odds and has triplets after Pope's blessings. So now he's, he's healing wounds. Uh, you know, and, and probably the one of the ones that's most disturbing is, is the fact that this next one, that the child hasn't even been, been healed, but they're saying the fact that this, this boy that has, um, I believe he has cerebral palsy, uh, yes, he does. That um, because he got to touch the Pope, that 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 was a miracle in itself, and and the, and that their whole family is transformed, and now they believe that healing is going to come, and and their whole outlook has changed because the the glow of Pope Francis' miracle still permeates home of boy with cerebral palsy, and so they tell this family story, and again, you know, you see the picture of the boy, and and it is um, you know a serious situation, and yes. you know hope he gets healed, but. One of the things that I thought was even more disturbing, it was in the article, they call out specifically that says that, <clears throat> it says that, um, well, here's the first quote that I want to call. It says, when I saw the Holy Father bless your son, this is another mother that has a child with cerebral palsy. It says, when I saw the Holy Father bless your son, I couldn't help but imagine him blessing my son, Ryan. You know, what's, what's the whole point about Pope Francis blessing you? Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name. There, there he is in, in our midst. Amen. You know, he said to go, to go to the elders and have them lay hands on you, put oil on you, and, and, and believe the prayer of faith that you be healed. But in this article, brother, the, the most disturbing thing is that it says that um, the, the family's house of this, this boy is, is filled with Pope-themed gifts. They have a Francis bobblehead, a Francis doll, a framed drawing of the Holy Father, and a commemorative bracelet along with Vatican flags in their house. Mm. You know, they get what they want in their house, but why is the media pushing now that, you know, oh, we got Pope, Pope statues, Pope bobbleheads, uh, drawings of him? Why is that being pushed in the media? And so, you know, again, they held all these things back to right after he comes and right after he, he you know, when he came and when he, he, he left, 
the United States. And the last one I, I want to hit here is, um, sorry, I got to copy and paste the right one. Okay. Uh, 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 where'd it go? Just one second, brother. It was uh, Aretha Franklin. I'll send you the link. Uh, you know, people probably know who she is, a popular uh, singer in the United States. She uh, sung for Francis at the, um, in Philadelphia. Sorry, I, I double copied and pasted the link. I'm going to find it real quickly. But basically, she says that the Pope uh, 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 performed a, a miracle cure on her because now after not wanting to marry her boyfriend, he has healed her heart. And now Pope Francis has conducted a miracle cure on Rick Franklin. And now she's going to marry her longtime boyfriend. You know, so you go from childbirth to cancer to chemotherapy to cerebral palsy to triplets. Now he's healing Aretha Franklin's heart. She didn't want to get married. Now she got the blessing of the Pope. Now she wants to get married. I just sent it over to you. Okay. So to me, and I'll transition here really quickly, brother, uh, this is tying into what I believe you're covering, which is that the, the Psalms 83 is happening. And what's going to likely come after that, I do share the same belief as some sort of fake millennium or, or, or tribulation, trying to get people to think that the tribulation and the rapture just happened and, and that Jesus has come back when it's really not 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 our, not our Lord and, and Savior. Amen. And just two more things to call out on the Pope really quickly. And I, I think this is happening in parallel because, you know, you hit the internationalization of, of Jerusalem yesterday, which I think is key. And, and the other link that I'll call out before I hit the last one is, is, is from the Huffington Post. They said that the, the headline is how Pope's visit to Ground Zero will bring interfaith healing. Amen. And I, yeah. I haven't said this yet. And so the article wow. you know, talked about the 9-11 memorial. And, and, and I'll just hit two points in here. It says the event will demonstrate, as Pope Francis said, the power of faith to battle hate. My so God! Apparently, if you don't jive with the whole ecumenical religion that, that he's developing, you know, it, it's going to be looked at as hate. But in this article, that's Revelation that, thirteen, uh, brother Kellen. Revelation thirteen, right there. You're looking at Revelation thirteen when you look at that type of statement, because it says that he has given power to make war with the saints. So the true children of God that doesn't go along with this particular. Uh, way of thinking that the Pope is doing, they're going to come against the true children of God. They're going to make laws that will put you in jail for speaking anything against the Vatican, what the Vatican does, or any other churches that go along with it. That's that interfaith thing. And it's just like when the Bible says you can't buy or sell, saving you take the mark or the number of his name or his name. It's not just you know, people forget us. It's, it's more than just uh, a microchip or something like that. It's much deeper than that. It's, there's or there's more ways that it can be received, and that's the danger that people are totally overlooking. But uh, sorry, brother Kelly, I just I, I wanted to throw that in there for people to where they make them think about what's going on. No, I think that's a good point, and that's where this climate change thing is coming in, right? Uh, which I also thought was a little strange when they decided to say there's water on Mars and that, that Mars used to look like Earth before until climate change hit it. So they, they decided to pump that right after Francis left too. But going back to this article, the thing I want to call out, it says a Pope 1,000, this is a quote from a, a, a Muslim imam, by the way. It says a Pope from 1,000 years ago exhorted Christians to launch the first crusade against Muslims, explained Saeed of the Islamic Society of North America. Now he continued, there's a Pope who wants to destroy the world over. Uh, now he continued, there's a Pope who wants to destroy the, the, destroy the hatred, destroy hatred the world over, he says. A Pope who named himself for a 13th century uh, saint who counseled Christians to cease their violence against Muslims. So this imam is noting that Francis named himself after France of Assisi, who went and counseled with the caliphate, which I thought is interesting because that's probably tying into what he's actually going to be doing. But this this last quote, brother, jumped out, and people can read in this article. This person says, this pope, the imam said, is our pope. My gosh. Is this, a, did you put that, that, did you put that one up here? Is this, or no, this is the ground yeah, zero. Yeah, the last one I just said. Okay. It's, it's, it's in that article right okay. there where he says, this pope is our pope. This is a Muslim guy saying that. I didn't know the Muslims had a pope. But, well, you know, if you notice, what did Mahmoud Abbas say? They're in, uh, in Israel there. Mahmoud Abbas was quoted as saying that we will, we will protect 
our holy sites. We will protect our mosque, our churches. I mean, he's claiming them to be his own. You know, so Mahmoud Abbas is definitely aligning himself with the Pope of Rome, which goes back to the fact that, the, you know, in fact, when he's mentioned that he, that he met with the caliphate, and yet it was the, the last time that there was a caliphate in, in the Muslim people was when Islam was first created to help destroy the early Christians originally, you know, somewhat 16, 15, 1600 years ago. And uh, that was because the Catholic Church had created the Muslim religion and they had a caliphate then. Uh, so they have one now again to do the same thing. They're trying to kill off true Christianity uh, in the process. So the last thing, brother, on this links is uh, this one just come out a couple weeks ago. And it's for some World Day of Healing or something in February of next year. They've already released the Pope's speech. And this is in the Catholic Herald, which is their, one of the Catholic publications. It says, on the World Day of the Sick, uh, this is a quote from Pope Francis saying, On the world day of the sick, let us ask Jesus and his mercy through the intercession of Mary, his mother, and ours to grant to us all the same readiness to serve those in need, in particular in our infirm, in our infirm brothers and sisters. Oh, it sounds wonderful on the surface, but did you catch the intercession of Mary? Where in the world does does, does, our, does Jesus tell us to pray to Mary, and, and Mary is not my mother physically, uh, so you know, I don't know what he's talking about. So you got people gosh, worshiping amen. him, you got idols, you got idols in that in their houses now to Pope Francis. They're promoting that. They're promoting it with celebrities, everyday people. Now he's saying everyone let's pray to Mary. And then you got, you know, a mom saying he's our Pope. I think this all is playing together into what's happening now because, you know, I've noticed in some of these headlines, rabbis and other people are, Christians are saying, oh, the Ezekiel 38, 39 wars is going to happen. And I won't, I don't have time and I won't go deeply into this uh, from a scriptural standpoint, but, you know, I would encourage people to just read, you know, the Bible as you always Amen. encourage people Amen. to do. That's right. And just look through it. But, you know, the one thing that jumped out to me in Ezekiel 38 is before Ezekiel 38, it says the valley of dry bones and they came to life. And then it says, David, the father says, David will, will, will come to life and he's going to rule over Israel forever. Well, we know who that David is because in the end of revelation, Yeshua says he's the root and the offspring of David. So number one, Yeshua hasn't returned yet, but then you go to 38 and it says that Israel is a land of unwalled villages and the people at rest. You and I know that there's walls all over Israel and checkpoints they're building. So that hasn't happened yet. Right. But the thing I really want to call out is that at the end, in verses uh, 17 through 20, God says, uh, assemble and come, gather from all around to the sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you. Maybe he's talking about the fact they weren't supposed to be sacrificing in the first place. But... Uh, a great sacrificial feast on the mountains of Israel. You shall eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the prince of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of he goats, of bulls, and, the, and of them the fat of Bashan. And, he's and it says that he was telling them to speak to every bird and the, every beast, is what it says in verse 17. So that's Ezekiel. And, and uh, then you've got in Revelation 19. Verses 17 through 19, the angel says, Come and gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of men and horses, the riders, and the flesh of all men. Again, it's said to the birds. How many great uh, suppers of, of the Lord are there where he's telling them to come down and eat the flesh? Revelation 19 is right when Yeshua comes back with his clothes, clothing dipped in blood, which, you know, a quick cross-reference is when you, you know, you look at... Um, what is it here? I've got it written down here. Isaiah 63, who is this who comes from Edom in crimson garments from Bozrah? He is he who is splendid in his apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength. We know who, who that is, and that's where it matches. That's why his clothing is dipped in, in blood. It, it says that I have trodden the wine press alone and from the peoples no one was with me. I trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath. Their life blood splattered on my garments and stained on my apparel. He's conquered Edom, which is tying into this whole system that's being put in place. And so for me, I, I'm a little cautious to say Ezekiel 30 and 39 is happening. I have, you know, when I look Amen. at it, I think that's Same thing. Event. Yes. I think. Tap Psalm 83. And, I, you know, I think that 
that the people just need to remember with all this, you know, excitement saying Psalms 8, you know, Ezekiel 30 and 39 is happening. Remember, remember one thing, and, and, and as people are telling you climate change and oh, go to the Pope for healing, I want to call out Matthew 23 and, and, and Revelation 19 too. And Matthew 23, saying to the scribes and Pharisees sitting in Moses' seat, all therefore was whoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not do after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay on men's shoulders, but they themselves not move one with the, one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen of men, that they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and if be called men, Rabbi, Rabbi. That's right. Amen. Be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and ye are all brethren. And call no man upon, uh, no man your father, for one is your father in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And then you go to Revelation 19. I just saw this this week. I've not seen this before, brother. He said that John was getting ready to fall down and worship the angel, right? You know, because this is when yes. Babylon the Great yes. was conquered. And she was back with his clothing dipped in blood, which matched the, 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 the Tanakh. If you read the order thing. At his yes. feet. Okay. And he said unto me, See, I'll do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus in the spirit of prophecy. You have math, you have revelation. You're not supposed to worship men or angels. Amen. Uh, you know, Amen. these people that want to sell you stuff or it's not just the, the rabbis anymore. You got, you know, you got pastors and priests and gurus, whatever. They want you to worship them. But he said worship God. You know, you read Ezekiel 30, 35 through 39, Joel 2 and 3, Revelation. He poured that a fear of all flesh. Amen. Amen. That's exactly um, right, Brother Kellen. And that's you know, brother, that's uh, very I, powerful. Um, can I, We lost Brother Kellen there just for a moment. Uh, maybe maybe we'll catch you. Are we starting to get You're a little bit? There. Yeah, I got a better signal. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. We you, can you, we got you here. You're, it's a little blurred up right now on the screen, but it's actually getting a little better signal there. So while we wait for Brother Kellen's signal to come back a little bit stronger there, and just let me know, Brother Kellen, when you're actually on. Um, uh, so just let him know that we can see him here. But um, all right, we got we, yeah. Now we got you, brother. Now we got you. You cleared up. Go ahead. Well, I don't know where I dropped off, but I you know I just wanted to reinforce again that the things accelerate as they are. Like you said, prophecy is being fulfilled every day, and people are getting pressured to worship popes and and whatever, or you know whatever leaders are selling a book on tape TV. Uh, you know, we're not supposed to worship them. We're supposed to worship Jesus. It says that in yes. Matthew 23, Revelation 19. It says it in other places. He's our teacher. He fills us with his spirit. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right, Brother Kellen. Let me just add something here to what Brother Kellen's been saying here uh, for you guys to see. And I was trying to pop these uh, scriptures open for you guys to be able to see it a little bit better uh, when Brother Kellen was talking about this here. Uh, but let me take you also, because Brother Kellen talked about um, the, the miracles. This is the main thing that Brother Kellen was really bringing out on here is the miracles that the Pope is doing. And something that really caught my attention here was in uh, Revelation 16 as well as in Revelation 13. Uh, let me just, I have to re pull it up and search again to get the exact right spot here for that. Um, okay, it's Revelation 16, 14. And I uh, just want to read this to you. For, for, for they are the spirits of death. Let me back up to verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. A thief, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth the garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now, when you see this right here, the miracles that they're, that they're lifting Pope Francis up with, 
They're making him as if he is a God. And so therefore, it's causing all the world to trust in him. And what is he doing? He's going to the kings of the world and he's leading them to the great battle. And, and I, I say this many times on the news broadcast as well. It's, it's Rome itself is the one that is pushing for these battles. Rome is bringing the entire world down to Jerusalem, down to Israel. For what reason? Because he wants that place there. See, Satan wanted to be like God. He wants to be worshipped as if he were God. He wants to sit in the temple of God. And Jesus already came and did this. He was in the temple there. He called out the, the, the false things that were going on with the Pharisees and the Sadducees of his day. But the thing is, is the devil hasn't had his chance, and he wants to be that Antichrist. He wants to be the one that takes the place of Jesus Christ. He wants to sit in the temple of God. So he's got to erect one to begin with. And he's also got to get better control over Israel. And he can't get it with so many faithful Jewish people there trying to do what they believe is right. It's a hindrance to what his work is. So he's bringing through all these miracles that he's doing, he's causing the world to flock to him, the world leaders, and he's dragging these nations down to Israel for battle. But they're going to be battling with God, not just with Israel. And that's where the problem's going to come in. And one quick other one, too, real quick, is Revelation 13. Because notice he says in here in verse 14, uh, oh, wait a minute, was, no, it's verse 13, and out of the mouth of the beast. Because remember in Revelation 13, I believe it is, uh, yes, yeah, 13 verse 14 there. He says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image unto the beast which had the, the wound by the sword and did live. And of course, that was during the French Revolution. This is when the Vatican was almost totally wiped out by the French Revolution, but they, they, they've revived. And in the last several hundred years, they have come back to the same power that they had when when Rome was doing the Crusades in Israel, killing off all the true believers of Yeshua as well as all the Jews. And so we're, we're really coming into a thing. And as well, Brother Kellen, you probably aware of this as well, but I have shared with the people the reason why we know who the beast is of Revelation 13, because it speaks about blaspheming the name of God. So most people figure, oh, it must be an Arabic guy or something like that. But Jesus, in the, in, the, uh, in the humane gospel, which is, as I've said to many people, if you can't accept it as, as a biblical text that just was not added into our canon, at least look at the historical value of this book, because it's clearly prophetic in nature. But he said that there would come a group that would rule in his name, that gross darkness would cover the land until the age that was to come, that it would be like that until light could be restored. And he says that that... that Speaking of the beast that is to come, he said he would blaspheme the Father's name like no other time, which is what Revelation 13 speaks about, but would do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Imagine that. Brother Kellen, you close here on this one here, brother. I'll, you take it from there. Well, you know, brother, I think, I think you hit it on the head. And I just want to hit one thing. You called out garments. And uh, I just want to hit two things really quickly, and we'll close you know, Moses definitely was a picture of a lot of, of, of Yeshua, right? So in uh, Exodus 19, when they get the Ten Commandments, interesting how we got ten fingers and ten toes. Uh, <laughs> God says to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on a mountain in the sight of all the people. Well, you know, let's think about this. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years, right? And so if Moses was a picture of Yeshua, Yeshua two days ago helped us consecrate our garments by his sacrifice, Amen. by showing us the, the proper way to live. And, you know, in Revelation, they change the translations in most Bibles today. It says in uh, Revelation, I believe it's 22, that those that have the right to eat of the tree of life and all the, the, the different fruits thereof, it says that they wash their robes in most translations. But the older translation says that they uh, kept the commandments of God. Wow. That. that that equates to washing the robes. So let's say the days of the thousand years, brother, we've had two days now to wash our robes, like he said in Exodus 19, for on the third day, which some people think we're just about to enter or just enter, the Lord's going to come down. Yes. So 
I would say, let's all make sure our robes are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen. And feel this Holy Spirit and listening to him and not man uh, that wants to, you know, say that the Pope is healing people and, and whatever else is happening. Amen. Brother Kellen, can you give the people your website uh, so that they'll know where they can go to see the things that you write about? Sure. So, uh, you know, we, we are... Um, for the videos for the conference, it'll be reconciliationwithisrael.com, and uh, we're, we'll probably be transitioning into posting some of our writing stuff there as well. We do have the magazine that we've been doing, but you know, we, we want to make sure we're focusing uh, the energy that the Father is kind of directing us right now to really get this word out from the conferences. And, and there are truth shops, what we're calling, is, is helping people develop in-person, small little communities, where, whether it be a group of, of, of believers in Yeshua or a mix of Jew, Jews and Christians together discussing some of the things that you cover at the conference, but really building these offline communities. And so if people want to find out how to do that. Some of these have already taken place. They can find out at reconciliationwithisrael.com. That'll be the website I point people to. Amen. That's where I'll be operating most things. That's so the one I can remember. <laughs> so, amen. Brother Kellen Davison, God bless him. We thank him. Thank you, Brother Kellen, for having you on with us today. Very, very insightful. I mean, very insightful information. And uh, I'll probably go and do another video at, uh, tomorrow and, and recap on some of the things Brother Kellen's brought up tonight. Uh, trust it be a blessing for you guys. God bless you. Shalom and good evening.